Hi everyone, this is Thomas Newman from the SEMA Hub. Today I want to look at the operational case study for November 2016 and in particular I want to focus on the SWAT from Ricci Power. Before we move on, I should mention that the SEMA Hub is a, a brand new website. It was established to help SEMA students um, of all levels uh, with their objective tests with their case studies um, and we provide high quality materials um, to help you achieve uh, the absolute maximum you can achieve uh, relating to these exams. So I recommend that you go along to the site, the address is there www.thecemahub.com uh, Check out the articles, there are two other, well, sorry, there are three articles in total for this particular case study, um, one relating to the SWAT, one relating to the financial statements of Marici Power and another that's focusing on the industry, the solar industry uh, at large. So head along and check them out, they're uh, really excellent resources for you. I also recommend highly that you subscribe. Um, you will receive a free uh, PDF with um, some financial analysis and ratio analysis for this particular case study, uh, but you'll also be notified of upcoming uh, offers uh, and free materials that are coming out very shortly from the SEMA Hub. Okay, let's move along then. So here's the high-level overview of the SWOT. I'm sure you're very familiar with the term, uh, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. The SWOT is a great way to, to come at the case study and it's a great uh, way to uh, hone in on the key issues relating to Marici power. Okay? In particular, uh, examiners tend to focus on uh, the weaknesses and threats uh, relating to uh, a company. Um, they want to see how you respond to those weaknesses and threats. Remember that the strengths and weaknesses tend to relate to um, the uh, characteristics of a business. Okay? They're more in, uh, in, internal, okay. Whereas the opportunities and threats uh, are more outward looking, okay. They have more to do with the with the external environment. Okay, so what do we see when we look at the strengths? Well, first of all, we see that uh, Marici Power has a wide portfolio of high quality products. Uh, they've got an excellent brand, a good reputation. They're uh, the biggest manufacturer in their home market. They have many routes to market, in other words, they have many distribution channels. And they're now part of a major global company, Voila. Okay. Weaknesses, they are very dependent on the freelance market. 85% of their revenues, in fact, are coming from that one market. Uh, they also very likely have uh, high production and labor costs, given the fact that they're located in um, a rich Western country. Not only that, they have uh, their location in the capital city of that particular country. They're very dependent on government subsidies, um, as is the solar industry at large. They are a little bit vulnerable when it comes to their key component, which is polysilicon. Um, there are very powerful suppliers of this component and um, it, um, while other companies produce this uh, key component themselves, um, Marici Power is not doing so currently. They're also very, very highly indebted. Their level of gearing stands at 59%, which is really high. Uh, and they have a worryingly low cash position. And there are issues with the liquidity, which we will talk about soon. Opportunities. Uh, efficiency is a really key aspect when it comes to these solar panels uh, and there is an opportunity to improve the efficiency of uh, the current uh, solar panels. They could also uh, look at uh, some new offers going into let's say more maintenance type activities uh, or even manufacturing batteries or something like that. They could also look at uh, expanding into new high growth markets because uh, it's uh, growth is uh, stagnated in Western, 
uh, in Western uh, Europe in particular. And uh, there's a lot of growth coming from Asia and other markets, which we'll talk about soon. The, we've discussed the importance of polysilicon, and there is an opportunity perhaps for uh, Marici to uh, make their own uh, or negotiate lower prices. Prices are at historical lows, and uh, it could be time to, to lock in those low prices over a, a longer time period. There is an opportunity perhaps to offshore production um, rather than just having all of the production uh, in that uh, wealthy Western country uh, so they could lower costs in that way. They could even merge production with, with, uh, with their new um, controlling uh, partner, Walla. There is an opportunity perhaps to get on the good side of, well, if not the government, perhaps the opposition. Uh, they could lobby uh, government to reverse some of the cuts to subsidies we've seen recently in, in Freeland. Then looking at the threats, um, there are other sources of renewable energy such as wind, etc., that uh, could steal a march on solar and get ahead of them. There is also a scope for further cuts to government subsidies. There's been a general trend and tendency uh, in the US, in the UK, uh, in recent years, for government to step back from this market. They're re uh, reducing um, the favorable treatment uh, that has traditionally been given out to, to these companies and consumer, uh, cons consumers of solar uh, products. There's a potential backlash, which we'll talk about from, from uh, two stakeholder groups in particular. Uh, and finally, competition is intensifying and likely to go on intensifying. Okay, looking at the strengths, let's go through them one by one. First of all, Marici um, has high quality products, okay? That's at the, the, the core of, of what they do. They have uh, one of the most advanced solar cell production facilities in the world, okay? Uh, they have um, efficient and sophisticated products, and they also have a history of innovation. So there's, there's this strong R&D focus, which stands them uh, well. Their brand uh, is, is strong. They have a good reputation, and they put customer needs at the center of what they do. They have good customer service, and customer needs seem to, uh, well, we're told they drive the entire business. While they're very dependent on free land, it is an advantage that they are dominant in that market. Okay, we're told they're the largest manufacturer in their home market. Uh, this allows them to, to fight off the threat of new entrants more easily, to take advantage of, uh, take advantage of economies of scales, negotiate better prices with, with suppliers, etc. Okay, and uh, sales growth has been strong, 15% this year, and um, so there, there are positives on that front. They also have many routes to market, uh, which is, is, is a, a positive. Uh, it lessens the risk of, the, of de depending on just one channel. So we're told, um, for example, that they, uh, they distribute directly to commercial customers and they also use installers in, in their domestic market of free land. Uh, but internationally, they're using distributors to reach uh, customers. And finally, um, I, see, I see it as being a strength that they're now part of a major global company. Okay, Walla is the, the company that has acquired them and they offer uh, Marici financial muscle okay, and expertise also. Okay? They also offer scale and possibly they pave the way for Marici to expand into other markets. What about the weaknesses? Well, there they are. Let's focus on, on them one, one at a time. Freeland, they're dominant there, but they're extremely dependent on this market. 85% of their revenues come from Freeland. Um, we're told in the future strategy section of the pre-scene, for example, that uh, Marici wants to maintain its position as market leader. And I would say, if this is the extent of, 
of their ambition, then they're going to run into problems. And in particular, they're going to run into big problems given the cuts to subsidies in the freelance market. Um, so very dependent on, on that one market. We've talked just briefly about the high production and labour costs that are likely to be affecting Marici, given the fact that they're located in the capital city of a Western country. Really, they're very dependent on government subsidies. Uh, they're not alone in, in sinning on this front because the solar industry is an industry where traditionally government has played a huge role. Okay? They've offered tax breaks to consumers, low VAT rates, etc., um, in an effort to, to push this alternative source of energy uh, as a viable um, uh, alternative, when it, um, as opposed to the traditional um, uh, coal, uh, gas, etc., um, that people have traditionally gone for. So, um, the next weakness is their reliance on third-party suppliers for a key component, which is uh, polysilicon. We're to told in the pre-scene that <clears throat> the price of polysilicon is very volatile. It uh, really fluctuates wildly. Um, also, the suppliers of this key component tend to be very large, okay? and they themselves are involved in many instances in the production of solar panels. So, not only are they suppliers, but they're competitors. So they're unlikely to want to cut um, Marici any kind of deal or any kind of favorable uh, terms. So we move on. We'll take these two together. Uh, the impact, uh, the financial side of, of Marici's business, uh, very highly geared. 59% is a really, really high level uh, of debt for Marici to be carrying. Uh, and they have a very, very worrying uh, and low cash position. Um, it's unsurprising that we see these two perhaps because we're told in the pre-scene that there have been particularly lean years in 2000, uh, between 2011 and 2014 for the industry at large. Okay? So um, I, I think their, their financial statements show a company that has endured a tough, tough period. Um, their quick ratio um, which you'll remember is current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. That stands at just 1.1, okay? Um, they, 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 what happens if um, one of those uh, um, powerful suppliers calls in uh, an outstanding payable and they just can't, they can barely meet their uh, short-term obligations with their short-term assets? Opportunities for Marici Power, okay? Efficiency. Efficiency is key when it comes to solar panels. Um, they want to move the conversation away from price. Marici is a company that has uh, sold its, its, itself uh, on the quality of its products. It doesn't want to get dragged into a, a race to the bottom when it comes to price with other competitors. We're told that you know these Asian companies have been flooding the market with cheaper products in recent years. Um, Marici wants to take the high road, okay? They want to maintain a higher price and they want to sell on quality, okay? So a key aspect of quality and the perception of quality is the efficiency of solar panels, okay? Um, if they can improve the efficiency of the solar panels, they can really sell on that and gain um, uh, uh, an advantage in the market. They could go into something like uh, maintenance services, okay? We're told that in the pre-scene that the cleanliness of uh, solar panels is very important, that they need regular inspections, and in particular, in a mature and, uh, market, such as Western Europe, for example, where you already have a high number of installations, so the growth in installations is stalled, you still have a big stock of 
uh, solar panels that need regular maintenance, regular inspection. So why, why not get into that? Marici Power could uh, plausibly offer maintenance services. They could also consider going into the production of higher quality batteries, which we're told are, are currently unreliable. And uh, possibly one of the most um, obvious um, opportunities for Marici is to go into utility scale projects. Okay? Um, we're told that this segment has become the largest in the solar market since 2014. Um, there seems to be a push towards these installations given how cost effective they are. Um, and the same subsidy cuts that we see in Freeland don't look like they're going to be extended to utility scale installations. They're focused instead on domestic and smaller scale installations. So Marici could usefully consider uh, branching off into utility scale installations. Of course, they can consider going into to new markets. Okay? Um, there's clearly high growth in the solar uh, market with 22.5% of all installations being implemented in 2015 alone, but that growth is not happening in Marici's traditional markets. It's not happening in Freeland, it's not happening in Western Europe. So there's a need to look at other markets. Uh, so which ones? Um, well, China to me looks like a tough uh, market to enter, uh, given the fact that there's some huge solar companies already very well established there. Trina Solar is the one that jumps out. They're the biggest solar company in the world, uh, but there are some other big ones as well. What about the US? Well, I'm not so sure. The US has been cutting subsidies. The government there has been reducing its support for the solar market, so I'm not so sure about that. Uh, Japan could be interesting because they have less intense competition there, but it's a, a really different culture um, to consider. Um, India is also an interesting one because India um, has really upped its game recently with um, some big installations uh, in 2015, so, so why not take a look there. Polysilicon is the key um, component in the production of solar panels, but Marici doesn't produce it themselves. Uh, so they're reliant on uh, what are powerful suppliers uh, for this key component. Okay? The prices <clears throat> for polysilicon wafers are at historical lows. We're told in the pre-scene that they're down from about $400 per kilo uh, in 2007-2008 to about $20 per kilo at the end of 2011. Okay? So they've been coming down drastically in recent times. Now would be a good time to sit down with their suppliers and lock in um, these lower prices over the medium term. So they're not having to deal with this uncertainty around the price of their key component. An alternative, of course, is, um, is to produce this in-house. It's a complicated process. It's a costly process, but Maybe Walla is doing it themselves. We don't know that. It could come up in, on the day of the exam. It's something to consider. Given the fact that uh, Marici is located in a, in a wealthy country, uh, in the capital city, they have their production there, um, they're storing their materials there, um, would they not consider offshore production? So moving some of that production to uh, lower cost countries and they could even consider merging their production with Walla. It's something maybe Walla is considering themselves to achieve some economies of scale and cost reductions. Now, uh, government support is a huge deal for this industry uh, but unfortunately for Marici in their home market um, the government is just not doing them any favours. There have been massive uh, cuts to support in Freeland and uh, Marici could fight back. Uh, they could do so by lobbying, okay, and in particular we're told in the pre-scene that the shadow 
energy secretary, in other words, the opposition energy secretary, is against the cuts. So they have a potential ally there. Um, they have an ally in the form of this politician. Um, so maybe they could push this person, uh, Lizanne Furwell, to, um, to back them up and to push for uh, um, some, some more support. And finally, coming to threats, the first one being other sources of renewable, renewable energy, wind and tidal. These are alternative energies as well. Uh, they could get ahead of solar um, and, um, and, and, and achieve, let's say, uh, more cost-effective um, offers. It's worrying to note that the trend in recent times in Western countries is towards government pulling out of the market. Okay, they're not interfering, which it depends on your stance. If you're very pro-market, um, it, it's great. You, you, you let the free market decide prices, you let, uh, and you let the competitors battle it out for position. Of course, it's not really an even playing field because um, Chinese uh, companies in particular are getting a lot of support from the Chinese government uh, and other Asian competitors are too. So they have cost, serious cost advantages over their Western rivals. Uh, the trend in the UK, in the US, has been to reduce subsidies, uh, to hike up VAT and to get out of the market. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of that coming. It's a threat. There's a potential for back, a backlash from um, two stakeholder groups in particular, I would say. Uh, one, the public at large, because we're told in the pre-scene that the general public has been subsidizing solar effectively. Um, there's been a hike in the general energy bills of the public at large to, um, to bankroll uh, the, the cuts that... Uh, um, we've seen to um, uh, VAT, uh, etc., in the solar industry. Okay, so the the, the public has been has been funding um, these generous subsidies in recent times to the solar industry, and maybe they just get fed up with it. Uh, the other group I see a potential um, um, for problems is employees. Okay, we're told. Uh, in the future strategy section of the pre-scene, uh, rather ominously, that uh, cost reductions will take place in all organizational units, i.e. there are going to be redundancies. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see an effect on the morale of current staff uh, as they see their, their colleagues turfed out, and it's likely to be uh, hastened, in fact, by the takeover of Walla. Walla will probably be looking for um, uh, inefficiencies and looking to lay off some, some current members of staff as well. And finally, I think competition is very likely to intensify. Um, there are non-Chinese Asian rivals that um, are growing in power and they're uh, flooding the European market with their lower cost uh, wares, so that's a, a serious threat. Uh, and as we said many times before, Western governments are stepping back from the market, which is not the case in Asia. Support is strong for Asian companies from their governments, uh, and as a result, they have serious advantages. Okay, that brings to a conclusion the SWOT analysis from Marici Parr. I hope it's been of use to you. Uh, if you feel like more, head along to the SEMA hub uh, where you'll find three articles in total uh, relating to this particular case study for November 2016. Remember to subscribe. You're going to get a free financial calculations and ratios PDF and you'll be notified of all of our great upcoming offers and free materials. So head along there and check it out. Good luck.